all of this, I think, begs the question for us then, as a church and as individuals, as we step into this new year, who will we be listening to? Who will be leading us in 2022? Who will be instructing us personally and corporately as a church? Because just as those first followers, those first disciples had other voices, they had other options that they could have taken rather than listen to and following Jesus, so do we. We have those same voices. We have people who are in opposition to Jesus. We have fear, perhaps, welling up inside us, but we have other options as well. And dare I say it, options which arise within the broader church. You know that there are scaremongers. There are doomsayers. They are, there are those that say that the, the world is a mess and that it's all unraveling and we need to despair and pull our hair out. And I'd love for them to read the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, which presents to us this same Jesus who instructs ruling and reigning completely. The one who is over and orchestrating everything that is going on. The one who is putting, not everything, pulling everything apart, but putting everything right. You know, we'll be tempted to listen to those scaremongers and those doomsayers because it latches on to that natural fear that we all have. It's hard to trust. It's hard to give ourselves all that. And so if we buy into this narrative, this story of the world as being ruined and ruin us to us, then yes, we'll feel more comfortable even if we are afraid. But that's not the voice of Jesus. That's not the voice of the one who brings peace and hope and joy. You know, there are also within the church those who I'm going to call gnat strainers. Those ones who would speak authoritatively into our lives and, and call for our allegiance and our obedience. And what they desire more than us trusting in Jesus is sorting our thinking out, making sure that we've got all our I's dot and our T's crossed. They're more, more satisfied when they have that chance, that opportunity to, to rebuke and to put right others in the church. And, you know, I think they're an incredibly appealing bunch to listen to because it feeds on that desire that we have to keep our Christian life purely and simply in our thoughts or in our in our the way that we talk about Jesus and following him over and above actually following him. Even to the exclusion of doing the things that they would have us argue about. I don't think that it's going to uh, uh, be missed over the next couple of weeks, couple of months as we look deeper into the Great Commission. But Jesus doesn't command his followers to teach others what to obey. He commands them to teach them how to obey. See, Jesus is about our lives being changed, our lives being transformed. So much easier just to speak to think, to discuss, to argue, rather than to be transformed. And so we'll, we'll be drawn towards those voices that are more about straining the net than walking the walk. Scaremongers, doomsayers, gnat strainers. Do you know, within the church as well, there are sentimental opportunists. Those who will speak to us in the in the forms in the way um, pointing back always to the good old days this is how it was and you know that's tempting because who doesn't like the good old days the good old days were good the clue is in the name but Jesus is not the lord of the past he is the lord of the past he's the lord of the present he's the lord of the future I mean he's not a lord who leads us backwards. He's a Lord who moves us forward, forward into a far more exciting future and reality than that which we have experienced. Christ, Christ's voice is not a voice of fear. 
It isn't about mere thought and ideas. It's not about something that simply might once have been an emotion that we felt in a particular place at a particular time. Christ's voice is one which brings us hope brings us peace, brings us confidence and courage to move into the future. All of those voices may begin with Jesus, but they certainly do not lead us deeper into Jesus. In fact, I fear more often than not, they will lead us away from him. And we need to be very careful about the voices that we follow. So my encouragement to us as a church this morning is this, that we must resolve, resolve once again, re-resolve to listen to him, to Jesus and to obey his voice, to follow his leadership, to fulfill his commands. How will we do that? Well, I think the first step will be to quiet those other voices because they will always be speaking, they will always be shouting, they will always be nagging for our attention and our allegiance. And we need to learn to quieten those other voices. That will mean turning off the news. That will mean turning off certain Bible teachers. That will mean asking questions of ourselves and asking questions of others but seeking to quieten those voices so that we can hear the voice of Jesus. And it will mean investigating for ourselves. And isn't it an absolute marvel, a wonder, a miracle that we have such free and easy access to God's word? We should be desiring to soak ourselves in the scriptures as we head into 2022. We speak about this time and time and time again as a church. And I, and I think we'll never stop speaking about it because it's something that we can never say we've had enough of. And I don't just mean listening to the words in red that we find in the New Testament. I mean listening to the word, the entire scriptures. We need to soak ourselves in him and what he has to say to us through them. That isn't necessarily always to understand and to draw out a lesson and to pick and to apply, but to be washed by his word, to be transformed in our thinking and how we see the world that we live in by being in his world. word. So that's how we're going to listen to his voice more in 2022. And we can do it by interrogating asking questions. Let's not be afraid of asking questions, small questions, big questions, crazy questions, sensible questions. We shouldn't fear asking questions of Jesus because Jesus is the one who comes to us and says, I am the way, I am the truth. When we ask our questions, if we do so humbly, if we do so genuinely with a desire to know him more, then he will answer our questions. So don't be shy to ask them. And I think we can listen to Jesus's voice more by interceding, by praying. We spent so much time last year thinking, considering what prayer is, and, and I hope it helped us to snap out of that idea of prayer being simply what we do in order to change God. Prayer is an arena in which God can be at work changing us too. I'd love you to go back and listen to the series that we did right at the start of the very first lockdown, looking at the Lord's Prayer and how much needs to be changed and transformed in us in order to pray those words. Prayer changes things, but prayer changes us and it helps us come into line with the heart of to know him, to trust him, to listen and to follow him. Let me just finish by making this observation then. His followers listened to him. They obeyed him and it led them where? It led them to Jesus up a mountain. Now commentators argue over which mountain this was, but let me just tell you the, 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 the scenario, the situation that I find most appealing. 
that this is the same mountain upon which Jesus was transfigured. This is the same mountain upon which Jesus' closest followers saw his glory fully revealed. Well, now here, here are all those who would listen and obey him, gathered together on that same mountain to see his glory. The one who had died and who is now risen to glorious new life again. When we listen to Jesus, when we follow him, when we obey him, it leads us to him and his glory. It moves us to worship. I love that really what Jesus then goes on to do is instruct them to share that glory with others. I think this is a passage which can be summed up like this, that when we listen to Jesus' voice, we will know him more and we will be called and encouraged to make him more known to others. That's what we've been saying for years, we're about as a church, and I think that is from the lips of Jesus himself. So let me challenge you, let me encourage you, let me suggest to you that in 2022, we need to be a people who listen to Jesus' voice, follow him and obey him. We quiet the others, we seek him out, we prepare ourselves to hear, we humble ourselves to do, and we should expect to see his glory shining brilliantly in our lives, in the lives of others around us, and desire to share that glory with others, because that is what Jesus has called us to do.